So there was this really interesting question that was posted on a physics study room board once. Wait till you hear what it was. When I was, when I was in physics in, in school, we had a study room. It was in the same hallway as our professor's office. And we would, there was about three or four of us. We were in a study group and we would take turns when we were working on our homework and our lab problems, we would take turns going into the professor's office to ask a question that, that all of us couldn't figure out together, right? It's your turn. I asked him last question. Of course, he loved us because he saw how studious we were, how determined we were to do well and to understand the content. So he didn't mind us asking questions. I think he was happy to see us. But Someone had written on the chalkboard in that little study room, it was a whiteboard, had written, what would chairs look like if the knee bent the other way? Now, that's kind of an interesting concept, right? Because if the knee bent the other way, how could you sit in a chair? It would be kind of weird. You'd be walking around with your face down against the ground because your knee would be bent the other way. But I didn't want to digress. I just want to give you a little chuckle. Just think about that. Some of you probably who are big into physics or, or, um, or, or some other field, um, you know, you're going to think about that all day now, right? So, so we don't want to be doing that because that creates really bad. It, it's, it's not the way the knee is designed. The knee is designed to work so that it bends with control as you go to sit, right? It bends with control as you go to squat and get something out from under the sink. It bends with control so that you can kneel down and get something you know, off the floor, right? The knee is meant to bend with control. So if we're doing this and we're pushing against resistance to straighten the knee, and its job is to bend under control, which is eccentric load, which is when a muscle gets longer under tension, right? So if I was to take a rubber band um, here, if I take this, I forgot to bring my, my flying monkey downstairs. I like to use my flying monkey. So this is, this is, ooh, this is old. That's why it's snapping. Um, so the goal is, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it with this because it's just going to keep snapping. It's dried out. That's why TheraBand isn't the best thing to use forever because it does wear out. But the goal is when you go to get this longer, it builds tension. Think of a slingshot, right? So if I've got a slingshot in my hand, the, the more I push that out, the longer that rubber band gets, the more energy builds up in it right? It creates this, this, this tensional energy. And the, the more tensional energy we create, the more power is released when we let it go, right? So we're loading it with energy and then we unload it by letting it go. And it'll fly further depending on how much energy we load it with. Your muscles work the same way. It's called eccentric load. So, and, and I'll give you just a simple little example here. So I take this lightweight here. This is only eight pounds. So if I go to lower this with control, my bicep is controlling the motion. It's getting longer under tension. That's eccentric load. Now, when I go to lift the, 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 the weight up, that's concentric and it's shortening to lift the weight. But when I lower it, that's eccentric. Your body is designed to control motion once it gets started, right? So what that means is when I start to walk, once I initiate motion, my muscles are working to control the movement that got started. So they're eccentrically loading all over the place, head to toe. 